And we conclude tonight with Michael Covarrubias, who is uh, president and CEO of TMG, a developer of uh, several significant projects around the Bay Area. And I wanted to have you on because uh, you're about to embark on a, a, a whole new era. But what I want people to understand, and I've done that with this program, is what you do has an impact on communities to begin with. But you have done projects that have direct impact and change the neighborhood, sometimes the social fabric. For example, Marin City, mm -hmm. uh, which people see going up 101, that whole new project that's down below there right. uh, is your project. We did that uh, in the early part of the 90s with Bridge Housing as our partner and the community. And you're right, it was a, uh, a small little donut hole in the donut of Marin County. Uh, for those who know about it, it was the highest crime rate, the highest unemployment in the county, yes. and uh, it, it was trying to figure out a way to get back into uh, uh, profitable business, if you will. So they owned some land that had been given to them by the government. Uh, we ended up with Bridge doing a venture where we created a, uh, a very new community. It's a great community. Uh, what, what was great about it for us was that we were able to provide all kinds of different services from uh, the most affordable rental project to the highest uh, for uh, market rate for sale condominiums, a shopping center, uh, ballpark, uh, new church, new freeway interchange. We'd really changed the whole community with, and we provided job yeah, training. Yeah, I, and I go by there uh, almost every Sunday because, uh, and, and I, I can't, I'm always amazed on how it changed that whole area. Yeah. And uh, we sold market rate condos originally in the two hundred and three hundred thousand dollar range that now sell for six and seven hundred thousand dollars. And uh, it really became a, a vital community. So you have always been having to work with planning commissions, with community organizations as part of the fabric of your company. Absolutely. Now you had a couple. Pro you have a couple projects in San Francisco there that we should talk about. Yeah, I think um, a couple of them are that are the most interesting that we're working on today. One is called Soma Grand. It is a 23-story condominium project with a 12% affordable uh, component that sits right next to the new federal building on Mission Street. And it's in an area that when we first started working on this project, you would not have ever said, well, there's a good place to build market rate condominiums. But our job was to try to look forward into the future, as mm -hmm. developers are supposed to do, and see where progress was headed. So there's a lot going on between Market Street and Mission Street. The Bloomingdale's at one end was in process of being uh, entitled. A lot going on um, on the uh, other side of uh, Van S. And what we saw was that there was going to be an opportunity to, to create a special place there with, as I said, both market rate and affordable near Civic Center. It's amazing that you were able to build 23 stories on Mission Street with the green movement and the anti-car movement. And you have a garage in there. We do. A big issue. How, how many? Five stories? Five, f uh, four stories, 500 cars. What I understand is the, 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 the Green Party and the progressives squawk so much about uh, these items. Right. How, did you, how, do you, how is it that we're building so much, have so many cars, so many garages, being built in them, and yet they continue to squawk. I mean, is, it's not possible to build these things without a garage, is it? Well, um, it depends where it is, of course, and what the local parking arrangements are. In sure. our area, I think part of the reason for the approval process was a couple of things. One, the federal building has no parking. No so parking? Zero. So sit, sitting next to us are going to be 2,000 federal employees plus several thousand visitors to that building every day. And if they drive, there's nowhere to park. How could they? Uh, how could they build a building of that size with that many employees with no parking? What's the thinking there? The thinking was it was on the Bart line, and Muni, and therefore it will. They will take public transportation. So the there was a victory there in in, in one sense, but now <laughs> they need to put parking there. Yes. They know that, and they. They allow you to They have allowed us to do it. We have a commercial garage that will have about 300 spaces. We have about 200 spaces that will go for the residents. Um, and so it's a, mix, it's a mixture of, of two types of uses based upon, in fact, in part, this, this giant federal building that, as mm -hmm. I said, is completely underparked. You have the Orpheum Theater across the street mm -hmm. that needs parking. Uh, Bloomingdale's, as you know, that project of a million two square feet has no new parking. 
So lots of new development was going on with no parking, and I think they viewed this as a, um, a way of providing it. This may ver variably be the last parking garage you see built in San yeah. Francisco because the powers that be are not parking. Well, now there's a ballot measure I think the voters are going to vote on. on there, there's an attempt to get signatures to try to get more parking around the city. Yeah. Um, now, the concept, okay, let's, uh, by the way, the concept you're mm -hmm. using here is uh, the, this, this high-end concierge uh, yes. method that <coughs> uh, others have, the Ritz has done and others. Is, there, is this becoming a growing market? Yeah. What Why don't we explain what that means? Yeah. In, in around the country, there are many condominiums that have been built where the, um, uh, as the baby boomers have gotten older and we are all looking for services, there's a hotel component to these projects, whether it's a Ritz or a Four Seasons. And they, uh, like the St. Regis here and the Millennium, and the premise is that the, the new buyer wants to be able to leave for weeks at a time, travel, or just wants to call downstairs, get room service, or those kind of things, and they're willing to pay a price for that. Um, we decided at Soma Grand that we liked that idea, but we didn't want to dedicate a part of the building to a hotel. So we, um, because of our, uh, both Alexis Wong and I, who are partners on this deal, know Chip Conley from Joie de Vivre, we went to him and said, what do you think about this new idea? Let's put a hotel services package together for the condominium owners run by Joie de Vivre, but there's actually no hotel in the building. So you can call downstairs to the concierge, get maid service, get room service uh, from outside places, get uh, yoga classes, um, technicians to work on your computer, all the things you could get if you were at a real hotel, mm -hmm. but, but there's no burden. Is this a growing market in San Francisco? Uh, there's still only two. Oh. There, there's the Ritz and the St. Regis. There is the Four Seasons. I'm sorry, the, uh, I said the Ritz. There's the St. Regis and the Millennium with the Four Seasons. There's also the St. Regis, um, Fritz Carlton that has um, an entire complex of, of uh, timeshare, basically, is what they are. But, but there are no other projects that have hotels in them other than those three. You also are, a, are doing, or you did one market. The Landmark. Uh, the Landmark. That's a challenge to do a landmark, isn't it? Yeah. Did you keep the? In, did you gut the building? We did. the uh, The building had been uh, gutted before by Southern Pacific, which right. was the original builder. This overlooks the Ferry Plaza. Correct. The beautiful brick building yes, right, at the, right at the end of Market Street, and it. Um, and so our challenge was to redo the outside of the building, but more importantly, we had to earthquake it. Uh, it's a U-shaped building with two long legs. Oh, okay. And in an earthquake, it was prone to do this. Yeah. So we ended up spending probably as much on the earthquake uh, seismic upgrade that we did on the building. Um, so that we were able to do that. It's great. I mean, I if that had gone, uh, that would be a much more, a much boring yeah. plaza than it is. Yeah. Uh, now, now it's no, it's a, it's a magnificent a, building. It's probably our favorite building. Is to, it really? to have worked on. Now, when you were you, uh, do you do all the work in house on that? No, we're a development company okay. in its purest form. We don't. We hire contractors. Mm -hmm. We hire architects. Um, we hire land use attorneys, particularly in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, and we and we hire a brokerage community to lease or sell. Some of the projects that you're working on, or you'd like to talk about, uh, that especially in San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, I think um, in today's world, the, the the developer's problem has become the cost of construction. Mm -hmm. The costs of materials and labor have all gone through the roof. So it's really hard to make the economics work on a market rate project. So we've spent the last couple of years uh, what we call in neighborhood improvement programs. We've taken office buildings that have not worked well for some reason or another, and we've tried to rehab them and add value by the reconstruction of them or the repositioning of them. Um, our best example is a building called the uh, former fashion building on uh, Townsend Street where the circle is and mm -hmm. the designer showcases are all around mm -hmm. there. Um, it's a building that didn't work very well. It had one entrance on one street and 600,000 feet to the end of the block to the, for the rest of the building. Um, low ceilings and a big atrium that, that wasn't very functional. So we're going to add a new entrance. We're this is a current project. Current project. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a new entrance on Townsend Street. We're going to add a second set of elevators. And we're going to basically cut the building in half to make it more accessible to people. And we think it's going to be really well received. Can you talk to, uh, you see, uh, you said developers can see sometimes, like you did at Soma, mm -hmm. Grand. Where do, what do you see happening uh, to that whole south of market, all the way down now to Mission. 
mission dog patch. Yeah. What what do you see as a developer? Well, we're looking at a site um, with another landowner that's out off of Third Street in that neighborhood on the way to Hunters Point. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's just the path of progress. It it's may take a while, but the path of progress was uh, jump-started by the light rail system going in. You do think so? Absolutely. But, uh, uh, of course, Mission Bay is, is a force. Mission Bay is a force. But when you look ahead and, and you're making decisions uh, about what to build or rehab, when you start looking from mi the, end of the south end of Mission Bay, because we know that's going to be developed. Correct. Going towards... Uh, south, what do you think it's going to look like? Well, Pier 70 is the largest site out there. It, it is. It, it's, uh, and it's the one that has all the elements that have to be dealt with in terms of community, in terms of rehab, uh, some historic. Uh, it's on uh, land that's controlled by the BCDC. It's uh, state lands. It's got about every element of complexity you can imagine. And uh, the closest it came to getting developed was the dot-com era because there was so much demand, <coughs> people could see going out there and specking, getting something approved. Mm -hmm. Today, with less demand, albeit not bad, there's not as much demand to go out there and take on those challenges. But that will come. Pier 70 will be the um, the next phase. The next phase, I think. Do you think it will be? Do you think it will be? Uh, it will be mixed use, obviously. Do you yes. think it's going to continue to be biotechnology moving south, or do you think it's going to be other industries besides those related to the life sciences? It'll be bioscience and related. I think that you know the, the the medical field is broader than biotech, and but they feed off of biotech. And so, whether it's in the Mid Peninsula or in Berkeley and mm -hmm. Emeryville, those places where biotech has has spawned, a lot of related medical products, a lot of just technology and software pops up around it. So I don't think it'll all be biotech, but it'll uh, be uh, it'll be associated or ancillary. Uh, correct. I think so. Now that influences the kinds of uh, residents, uh, I mean, scientists and mm -hmm. people in that field. Does mm -hmm. that mean that we're going to see more of the existing uh, residents pushed out or moving out because their property is so valuable they decide to sell it? Well, there's obviously in the politics of San Francisco, there's a, a large um, uh, effort, and, and rightly so, to try to preserve that which is it should be preserved. So there are contingencies that want to preserve manufacturing, for example. Whether manufacturing ought to be in San Francisco or can afford to be in San Francisco is a, is a question, but there it will It is a warehouse area. It, it's warehouse distribution. today. Distribution. That's right. And I think that'll continue for, for the okay. distant, the near future. So you think that really the uh, up to Pier 70 and, and, uh, and so on will be the next border and, and mm -hmm. there'll be infill, which is what you do. Correct. You're looking at a project there. Correct. Um, do you envision with the this new in s uh, source of capital from the pension fund mm -hmm. uh, that you're going to be doing um, uh, affordable housing type projects or mixed affordable housing type projects? Was it a requirement of the capital? No, uh, CalPERS is our, is our partner on this venture of, of uh, $100 million and it has uh, no particular requirement okay. uh, of itself. It can be for affordable, it can be for uh, what we call workforce housing. They don't housing. put restrictions on it. It can be for luxury, it can be for apartments, it can be for uh, for sale. When we deal with communities, that's where we get into what's the right yes. thing to get through the. And well, we'll we'll keep an eye on you. Good. And, and in your for the projects you've done, they're very interesting projects in San Francisco. Thank you, Michael Covarrubias. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time.